Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you the process I follow to paint realistic people. It all begins with mixing the right colors. In this lesson, I will share my color mixing secrets with you, as well as the steps to follow to properly apply those colors on your figures. This process requires a lot of patience, but is very valuable in the long run. If painting people has been a real struggle for you, pay close attention, I can definitely help. Before we begin, be sure to take your Turpinoid Natural. I really like this because it's safe for the environment. And you're going to put that in your jar and use it to clean your paintbrushes as you go. As we begin painting, I want to start from left to right. If you are a left-handed person, you might want to start from right to left. But the reason I want to start here is so that I can paint the hair and then work on the face without smearing the face if I did that first and then paint the hair. So I'm going to show you the different colors we need to paint the blonde hair on my daughter. As we begin mixing the paints, I always look at my reference photo because then I can study the colors and decide exactly what colors need to be mixed in order to accomplish that look. So let me show you how to do that. Um, this is my layout for my paint palette. I always do a lot of liquid so that as I'm working, um, my paint is more slippery and I don't have to worry so much about my paint sticking as I apply it. Okay, so going around, these are the colors that I applied. Uh, this is called Radiant Magenta. This is Dioxazine Purple, Cerulean Blue, Titanium White, Hansa Yellow, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, raw sienna, burnt sienna, cadmium orange hue, burnt umber, and ivory black. And with these colors I can accomplish um, really, really nice blonde hair. And you know, a, a mistake that a lot of artists make is that they, when they go to paint something, they think that they just need the direct color from the tube. Well, that's false. You want to use all of these colors in order to make a lot of colors. So let me show you um, how to do a few of those colors. So for the lightest part of her hair, it's very, very blonde. And so we want to mix a color that's just slightly darker than white. So I'm going to take yellow ochre. This seems to be one of my favorites as I begin painting blonde hair. Okay, and see how light that is. So that's one of the shades that we will need. And you just keep working your way darker and darker and darker. Okay, so swipe that color here. And then the next thing you'll do is take the next shade, which is raw umber, and mix that. It looks like we need a little bit more. And notice how that got slightly darker. So you just keep going on down the line, swipe your paint. Okay, now you're going to use some burnt sienna. And now you're getting an orange tone, which is okay because there's a lot of shadows within the hair and that's one of them. Um, I would swipe that over here and then take some of your pink. We want to do a couple of varieties of the orange and this will add to it if we have one that has pink in it. Okay, so now we have four colors. Now let's take that shade and take some more burnt sienna and mix that in. Keep going down the line and just darken as you go and, and watch as I work so that you can follow along. Okay, so these are pretty bold, and a way to tone them down is you can take ivory black, and now you can take some white and mix that in as well. And what that will do is it will soften that, 
and give it a more subtle look because in blonde hair, you aren't going to see a deep rusty red or rusty orange, but you will see this in the shadows. So black and white is what I use to tone that down. Over here, I would say not to use the black, but add some white. Okay, and we're going to tone that down a little bit. And then this gets a little tricky. You would never guess I was going to add blue, but I am. And I know you're thinking, Ugh, why in the world would you add blue? But I'm telling you in the shadows, if you add some of that, this is the color that's being reflected by the water and the sky in her blonde hair. And so if you add this, it's going to make it look much more realistic. Okay, so now we need a purple, not bright, bright purple, but take the purple and a little bit of black, a little blue, and some burnt umber, and white, and watch what you get. If, if the purple, I mean that purple is really strong, and so if it overpowers, which it's trying to do right now, just add more white, more burnt umber, a little more black, and then that should tone it down a little bit. Okay, and you just keep doing that same combination until you get the color you want. So I'm gonna do more burnt umber, a little more blue, more black, and again, mix that. Okay, so now it's not bright, but we still don't want it quite so dark either. So now I add more white to it. And by the way, all of these colors that you're mixing, you can use for the skin. So don't do away with this when you're done with the hair because you can still use it. Okay, so there's purple. And this purple we can still use for some of the, some of the shadows that we add underneath the hair. Um, I'm gonna add some burnt sienna to this one. There we go. See how nice and rich that color is? You can even add a little bit to this one. And now I'm satisfied. Okay, so <laughs> in looking at these, I know you're thinking, what? That's how I do blonde hair? Well, yeah, it is actually. Uh, it's amazing what color does to enhance a painting. Um, without a lot of colors and a lot of variety, you just won't get that realistic effect that you're going for. Okay, let's take white and pink, mix those two together. We need a few more shades in here. And I want that cadmium yellow. I really like that color. We'll mix that in. And a little bit of burnt sienna. I need to get more burnt umber on there. A little bit of burnt umber and little black and let's take raw sienna add that as well i know it's looking green but um, we're going to add some more white to that to brighten it a little bit more i am going to leave this side darker And that is a good mid-tone for the hair. Now do you see where the blonde is going to come from? Can you see that clearly now? Okay, so let's get started with these colors. And I will be adding some more as we go because I know that I'll need a few more, but let's get started with this. So these are the paint brushes I'm going to use. Um, this is a long fine tip 
That's a short fine tip and that's a medium fine tip. And then um, also you can get a little bit bigger um, and use a square brush. And then I really like this angled brush right here. That's really good for hair. So if you have these, um, these are great. If you have more brushes you wanna use, feel free to do so. But this is what I like. Okay, I'm ready to paint. When beginning the hair, begin at the top adding the lightest shades first. Add darker shadows underneath to enhance the lighter shades. Then add streaks of the mid-tone colors or medium shades. In between the mid-tones, add streaks of dark brown for layering. Then darken at the base of the highlights with that same brown. Now you will begin to build color upon color for more depth. Be sure to add light wispy strands of blonde with your finest tipped brush. Repeat those same steps to paint the rest of the hair. I know you're probably wondering why her hair is brown at this point, but what you need to do with oil paints, if you look at the photo, you can see that all these highlights go over the brown. And with oils, you have to wait for this to dry in order to do all of the streaking across. So what you want to do is have a nice, dark, shadowy area that you can do that and then it will make all of this blonde stand out even more when you're ready to do the blonde. So I'm going to give this a day to dry and I am going to start the face at this point and tomorrow as this is a little bit more dry then I'll start to add all of those highlights. Now that we are doing the flesh tone we're going to keep all of these colors that we originally mixed and add a few more. So I added a few extra here and this is phthalo turquoise this is quinacridone magenta this is cadmium barium red light this is flesh hue and this is green light and that's kind of funny oh it's permanent green light yes okay um so what we're going to do is mix probably 10 to 12 more colors for the flesh tone just so that we have a lot of variety and we want to make it look as realistic as possible. So I'll teach you a few tricks. Um, let's see, I am going to get more white on my palette really quick. Hang on just a minute. Okay, I added more white and also add this bad boy. You want a lizard and crimson. That is one of my favorite colors when mixing flesh tone. So I am going to take this Terra Rosa color and some yellow ochre and I'm going to mix those two together and I'm going to add the flesh hue. And you can see that we're getting a nice orangey pinky flesh tone. Okay, and from here you want to swipe that and then clean off your palette knife before you dip into the white. Just take a little bit of white and mix it in with, with that. you get a lighter shade. Now it's also important that you have some really good golden tones 
This one is a little too green for the flesh. However, we will probably use that as well, but I want to have another color. So I'm going to take the cadmium yellow and cadmium orange, mix those two together. So your palette knife and then mix these two together these three I should say there's three colors there and look how good that looks that is such a pretty golden tone and then we need some pinks and reds and that's where the alizarin crimson comes into play so take that alizarin crimson swipe there take some burnt sienna a little bit of burnt umber and white and mix those together Look at this beautiful rosy shade that you get. I don't think there's ever a time when I've painted a person and not used a lizard and crimson. So can you start to see the flesh tone colors, how they're coming together and they work very well together when you have all of these colors. It's funny because a lot of people think, well, skin is just, peach, a peach color. That's what I thought when I was little. I thought, oh, I'll use a peach crayon. And it wasn't until I got into college that I realized, no, <laughs> skin has a lot of different colors, including blues and greens and purples and pinks. And it's important that you use all of those shades. Okay, so I just wiped my palette knife off here. And now we're going to get some tangy bright colors. I'm going to mix that in here. So, <clears throat> so this is the cadmium barium red light and this is a gorgeous shade and it will add a lot of depth to the skin. So I'm going to take what's left over on my palette knife swipe. I'm going to add some white and also some cadmium yellow and then this lighter yellow. And watch what happens. You get a really, really bright, sunny color here. Okay, and now we need some greens. So take that permanent green light, swipe over here, and to tone that down, you can mix burnt umber, burnt sienna, some white, mix those together. And I would even do a hint of black. And when you use green, you don't use a lot. You just apply a tiny bit and then blend it into your colors. So don't go crazy with the green. You don't want to create a monster. Um, now we need a good mid-tone color for the core shadows. So Burnt Umber, Elizarin Crimson, those two together mixed with a little bit of Burnt Sienna. Okay, this, this is a really good shadow, a dark shadow, but now for that core shadow, Let's swipe that over here, add some Terra Rosa. And some blue, Cerulean blue. And notice how that blue toned that down perfectly. Okay, so now we have a dark shadow, core shadow, and then all of these other colors, you have your bright highlights and some of the regular flesh tones. Um, another color to have would be pink. So take pink and your bright, bright orange, mix those two together. And this creates a really pretty color that is also nice to have. And 
We need a good gray, so I'm going to take blue and black. So take your cerulean blue and black, mix those two, and then you add white, and it has a little bit of brown in it, which is good. It's good to have a little brown for that gray. And this is not a dark gray, this is just a light neutral gray. And this is actually good for some of the reflected light that you add on your skin. Um, I'll show you how to apply that. But anyway, now we have several colors to work with. And again, during the process, if you feel like you're missing a certain color, feel free to mix it up and apply it. You don't have to follow me exactly. You'll get more comfortable with the process the more you do it. So anyway, let's get started on that face and here we go. When I paint people, I usually begin with the darker areas first and then I add the lighter shades. Gently blend each color into the next to create a softened look. Pay close attention to the shadows and highlights from your initial drawing. Those will be your guide as you paint. Definitely use multiple colors as you build the skin tone. More is better and brings it to life. If you want the shadows to be enhanced, add a little red. It warms it up a little. To have the hair stand out against the skin, add a dark line between the two for separation. Also notice how I added a dark shadow behind the ear. Just remember that you always need a shadow, a mid-tone, and a highlight in almost every area of the face or body. As I switch to time-lapse, carefully observe these steps. Where the light is hitting the face, use your lightest shades such as light orange, pink, ivory, and white. And please don't forget to blend. It makes it look softer. Careful observance of lighting will also help you to know which colors to use and when. Learning to paint people is a process. It doesn't happen immediately, but over time as you practice more and more. Keep watching to the end as I continue time-lapsing the process. It's fun to see the entire painting come together.
Yay, now for the fun part. The hair is dry and now we can add the wispy strands of blonde. And now for the cute baby. This one is really fun to watch. And finally, I'm done. This entire project took 26 hours to complete. 
Thanks you guys for tuning in today. I sure enjoy sharing my art with you. For more amazing projects to come, just hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.